Now what we want to do is push on this a little bit because this is not the only kind of function we know how to differentiate. We know how to differentiate a lot of different things. Like for example, this one down here. Now I'm interested, again, just a show of hands. Who wrote the answer like this? Just hands up straight. I want to say one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, less than half the class. Thank you, hands down. I'm going to wager that more of you probably actually did this on your second line. Could you raise your hand if you expanded? Or third line, like if something like that, okay? All right, again, about, about half of you. All right, thank you. Now, why do we do this? Why do we bother to expand that guy before we go on with the integration? Sorry? Kind of, because like, that's what we're taught for, so we just know like, it's kind of instinct for me to do that. And Good, it's yep. Hard, it's kind of like an instinct, because you've, you've turned that problem into a problem that looks like all the other easy ones that I know how to deal with, right? I can just go term by term here, okay? However, you can see that's easy because the question I gave to you was relatively simple. If I gave you some ridiculous power like five or six or seven, you're like, forget it. I don't want to sit here and do all of this um, expanding. It would just take a very, very long time, okay? So what I want to do is see if we can take an equivalent rule of differentiation, right? and then come up with its equivalent for integration, okay? What we're doing here, and this comes to that name that, um, for what Sophie wrote here, what we're trying to undo, if I gave you this, then you'd use a particular rule to differentiate her. You wouldn't expand, I hope. What rule would you use? What would we call this, if you differentiate this? We would use the chain rule, right? Because you're like, I don't need to expand this, I can just take the three and do the inside and do the outside and I'm good to go, okay? So I want to, Reverse that. I want to use the reverse chain rule, okay? So if I differentiate, I'm going to give you something like this. Here is something that would require the chain rule. Help me work out, using the chain rule, what would be the derivative of this? Have a think for a second, just to get everyone to catch up. Hmm. All right, don't give me the whole answer, sorry. Start me off. What's the first thing you want to put down? So, with the derivative for the integral. Just the derivative. Oh, n minus one. Okay, so you're going to put the n minus one. So that power is going to reduce. We will get that eventually, but I'm going to suggest maybe that's not the first thing that we do. There's actually something I should have done earlier, Max. Okay, I should probably have brought that power out out the front first because if I bring the n minus one out the front, that's actually not the correct derivative, is it? So I'll take the index out the front first. Um, then I can reduce the power. By one. Now, in chain rule, you guys know there's two parts, right? There's the inside and the outside. Which one have we done so far? This is the outside. There's a thing, a big fat thing, it's been raised to a power. We've dealt with that. Now we're going to deal with the inside. What is the inside derivative? In this case, have a look carefully. Oh, the inside function is ax plus b, so its derivative is it's just a, right? That coefficient there. We know if you differentiate a constant like b, it's just it goes, okay? So I can multiply this whole thing by. A, I'm done. Okay, if you wanted, you could write the A out the front because they're both numbers. But this is chain rule for when you differentiate. So now, what would the equivalent look like for integration? As in, like, you want the. Okay. All right, hold on. Let me write something to set us up and then we'll have a go. So now I want to integrate something that looks like this. We're not doing chain rule here, we're trying to undo chain rule. So let me write something in for us. Okay, so do you want to start us off? Okay. Um, wait, is it n plus 1 or n minus 1? Uh, are you talking about this? Oh, sorry. Or this one? That's a plus. Okay, yeah, sorry. Um, as in, like, the formula I used for that one down there. Okay. Oh, sorry. No, sorry. I don't know why I'm doing that. I'm already, I'm already doing the outside. <laughs> I was going to um, say, wait a second. That's better. <laughs> um, so it's a bracket ax plus b bracket to the power of n plus 1 over n bracket a. Okay, let's have a look at this. And we'll do it again step by step, right? Sophie's done, as far as I can see, three things. She's done three things, uh, which corresponds to the three things that we did for the derivative, right? So that's a good, that's a good sign. Um, we had three things in chain rule. So now I've got three things to undo chain rule. Let's have a look at them step by step. So the first thing that Sophie changed was this. Does that look right? Does that undo what differentiation did? It does, right? Because here we brought the index down by one. Here we've increased the index. So thumbs up, that corresponds to that. Okay, the next thing that came was this n. Now let's look carefully here, okay? This is a division, which is opposite to the multiplication we had earlier, right? 
So this was multiplication. This is division. It's on the denominator. But be careful. Be so careful. The order matters, doesn't it? In fact, it's what I pointed out with Sarang. Sarang wrote this first. And I said, no, hold on. This comes later, right? This ends not quite right. We need to adjust it a little bit. It's, it's doing the right thing, but how should we adjust it? N plus one. Okay, now, now it's such a minor difference, isn't it? Because you're like, I've got three things to do. I'm just kind of do all of them, right? The reason, how do we end up? How do we know that it's actually n plus one and not n? So if you want to. Because you're using the same uh, indices. Yep. Yeah. Indice yep. Okay. In this index. And by the way, what's great about everything you know about integration is you can check it with all the stuff you're very good at with differentiation, right? Think about starting to differentiate this thing, just like you did before, right? The index would come out the front immediately, and then what would it do? It would, it would, it would cancel with this n plus 1, right? n plus 1, n plus 1. You're like, oh, good, that's the integrand I was supposed to get. Does that make sense? So it's a minor, minor <laughs> difference, but it is quite subtle and important. All right, last thing, this a. Are we happy with that guy down there? The a, that's the a you're wondering about? OK, great. So this is the last step, right? Have a look up here. This is the last thing that we did when we differentiated. Because we dealt with the outside, and then we said, oh, ooh, don't forget, it's chain rule. Do the inside as well. Okay? Now, this is reverse chain rule. In fact, I'm going to write that down, reverse chain rule. So when we look at this n plus 1 and this n plus 1, they come from the outside function. Right? They come from something to the power of n. We've dealt with the outside now. n plus 1, n plus 1. But then this is reverse chain rule. We've got to deal with the inside too. So what's the inside derivative here? So instead of time that we divide Exactly. We're dividing by a to counteract our multiplication by a that we would have done with derivative. Yeah. Sorry, stupid question, but why do we why do we integrate the outside but then do, um, find the derivative of the inside? Ah, that's a great question. Why do we integrate the outside but differentiate the inside? That was the question, right? Okay, I will address that question by just finishing this answer off and then checking it. Okay, um, my answer isn't finished. What do I need? Good. My constant of integration always appears. Okay. Now, Mo always asked a very perceptive question. Why do we like want the derivative of the inside? When we were, think, we're thinking about integration this whole time, okay? Well, again, think about what I'm trying to achieve with integration. I'm trying to land at something. This result, what do we call it, by the way? Starts with a P. A primitive, right? We're trying to end up with a primitive such that if you take this guy and differentiate it, you'll land here, okay? Let's test it. Let's find the derivative of this somewhat disastrous monster, okay? It's AX plus B to the power of N plus 1 all over n plus 1, and then an a, we might as well throw in the constant of integration for good measure. OK? We know how to differentiate these things. Let's have a go. What's the first thing that we do? You taught me up here. First thing? Index is going to come out the front. Do you agree with that? Index come out the front, so I'm going to do that. Then this guy was still here. What happens to the index now? Minus 1, so n plus 1, take away 1, just gives me n, thank you. Okay. Um, all this stuff is still here on the denominator, right? So far, you've only dealt with the outside using chain rule. What's the inside derivative? A. It's a, isn't it? I should actually say it over here. So then I multiply by a. Wait. Yep. You know how I said when you do plus C, it's like adding the 5 or the minus. Yep. Yep. Ah. Yep. Good question. Okay. So, Sarang's asking this plus C, this plus C, right? We've added that on. Is it, any, is it different to this times A? And hopefully the answer was clear in what I just said. It's multiplication, yeah. not addition. When we've got this plus C here, um, I'm differentiating it right now. In fact, what happens to it? It's gone. It's gone. OK, so I can um, disregard it. It's a plus 0 on the end here. But that, that a, that a, it's a multiplier or a, div a division. That sticks around. It, it's sort of attached a little more closely. OK, now I've, I've done the differentiation, but it's a bit of a terrible dog breakfast. I can simplify this, right? What can I can cancel? N plus, N plus 1 goes. Done. What else? 
And this is the answer to Moe's question, right? Why did I need the derivative of the inside, even though I'm integrating? And the answer is because I've got to undo that from the normal chain rule. Reverse chain rule undoes everything that regular chain rule did. So these are gone. That is the integrand I was hoping for. Is that OK? All right. Now, I said to you before that I was um, leaving this conspicuous blank in the heading there. OK. Um, question? <laughs> are you looking at my mess and not liking it very much? I'll tidy it up for you. We were, just, we were just confirming. We were just confirming that we're getting the answer right. Okay. Uh, we have so far called the result of integration, we've called it a primitive, right? We've called it a primitive. Um, however, we quickly start to realize that um, this function here is not just something that it's like, oh, this is where I came from. It's its own thing. And so it gets its own name. It's the result of integration. So we call it an integral. But it's not just any kind of integral. This new word I'm going to put up the front here, which is going to seem to come out of nowhere. This kind of integral that we're working on right now is called an indefinite integral, which of course begs the question, what is a definite integral? Well, we will come to that. I'm telling you this right now because you're going to encounter this language. They're going to say, uh, work out the indefinite integral of, of this or that. And what they mean is, can you integrate this please? Um, it's the same as asking for the primitive function. Um, you guys know we often have many, many names for the same thing when we care about it for different reasons. So this is the name so that you recognize it. Okay? Like, I worked 